Petty is a school which, despite its age and somewhat settled appearance, is focused on the future in most respects. One of those respects is that compared to many peer schools, we don't talk about our past in the context of tradition after tradition that is handed down. Instead, we, ex we expect you to assimilate to a culture of contribution rather than to a culture of continuation. Still, every year we designate the chapel meeting closest to February 12th as Founders Day because a founder of this school, not the founder, a founder of this school, Thomas Baldwin Petty, was born on February 12th. And I say a founder because Petty did not actually start the school that's named after him. In 1864, that school was named the Heightstown Female Seminary. However, he did rescue what had become, and get ready, this was a mouthful, what had become the New Jersey Classical and Scientific Institute from its financial challenges in 1872. One can hardly imagine the Ala Viva being written if it was about the New Jersey Classical and Scientific Institute. The trustees at that time renamed the school in Petty's honor and out of their gratitude. And over the next decades, Founders Day became closely linked to Thomas Petty. Lately, and thanks to our speaker today, we have used these annual events to recognize that there are, by history and then by design, many founders of Petty because it is a forward-looking place. As our motto and the iconography of our seal suggest, we are focused on beginning anew with as much, as much fervor and sense of adventure as we can bring, while also honoring the successes and contributions of our predecessors. And as that same iconography suggests, we are forever poised between our celebration of what we have accomplished for ourselves and our community and what we hope to accomplish next in service to the highest qualities of citizenship. We are both the fruits of our own labors and the builders of what head of school Roger Swetland called the greater petty. This is a role every one of us has the obligation to play according to our interests, talents, and the opportunities life gives us. Into this moment steps Rosemary Gleason, who served the Petty School for many years, beginning in 1981, and in many different capacities, English teacher, advisor, dean of students, assistant head of school, and chaplain. In that last capacity, by title, and in every other capacity, by choice, she was an advisor, counselor, and confidant to students, colleagues, and heads of school. Her impact on the lives of her students, many of whom teach here now, was uplifting, profound, and enduring. And she retired from Petty in 2014. I asked Ms. Gleason to speak today for two reasons. First, her role in founding and sustaining the contemporary role of chapel at Petty. Our chapel meetings, as you know them, trace their origins to the chapel program she reimagined. When I came to Petty as a young teacher, chapel did not feature the student voice that it does now. When we had speakers who were not members of the school community, which was very often the case, they tended to be what we facetiously called friends of Finn, referring to the then board chair and major benefactor, Finn Casperson. These were distinguished public features of, of figures who were greatly accomplished in their areas, but they often had a challenge connecting with the student body they addressed. Ms. Gleason changed all that. And by 1996, Chapel had become the meaningful, centering community event that is a highlight of our week. It is the only time we gather as a whole school, and it had become the weekly experience which, inspired, which has inspired many of us, and notably inspired Alia Santini of the class of 1996 to write the vivid, moving poem that hangs in the narthex. The second reason I asked Ms. Gleason to speak is that she's also a person who helped found this community every day outside of her chaplain's role. For 33 years, she made our petty community a part of her already full life, devoting tireless energy, excellent teaching, and considerable good humor to help found 
Petty in her time, helping to lead us to become the community we are today, Rosemary Gleason. Don't believe all of that, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Onion and Mr. Quinn. On my refrigerator, I have a magnet that says it takes a long time to grow an old friend. And to me, Petty is an old friend. And a lot of memories come rushing back to me when I step onto this campus, and especially when I step into this lectern. I'll be sharing some of those memories with you today because it's Founders Day. I had the honor of teaching at Petty for 33 years, and for 23 of those years, I was chaplain. I had a little fun last week trying to figure out how many times I stood here. And I'm sure it's wrong, but what I came up with was 1,426. <laughs> However, those 23 years here in the chapel almost didn't happen for me. When Mr. DeGray asked me in 1991 if I would be the chaplain, my immediate reaction was, no way. I said that because I was afraid to do it. And you have to understand, as Mr. Quinn suggested, I had already assumed a lot of roles here at Petty, Dean of Students. I was a very happy member of the English department. Uh, I was dorm soup in Avery, and then I was dorm soup in Roberson, and on, on and on. I even got to be on the board of trustees as the faculty representative. So it wasn't like I didn't know Petty, and it wasn't that I was afraid of a new challenge. Chapel was different. The chapel has always been where Petty addresses its spirit, where we consider all those great intangibles like love and commitment and responsibility, friendship, the meaning of life, and the impact of death. I knew what, well what this building and what the experience of chapel had meant to generations of Petty students. I'm going to give you just a few examples of how this building itself contains the history of Petty in profound ways. When we walk into this building, we should immediately notice the photographs of very young soldiers. They're all Petty graduates, mostly the 63 Gold Star boys who lost their lives during World War II, but also one young alum who died in the Korean conflict and six others who died in Vietnam. We're in the Air Memorial Chapel. It was built after World War II to answer the question, how shall we honor them? It also was to ensure that we would never take their lives for granted. These portraits obviously reflect important people of Petty's past. I'm sure you all know Thomas DeGray over there, or Thomas Petty. Um, here is Petty's first headmaster, John Green. His name sounds familiar because over there is another Petty headmaster, John Green. Uh, I suspect many of you know our Mr. John Green because he's still very active in helping Petty. Certainly those of you who live in Potter Dormitory uh, know that that portrait on the back wall is of Mr. Potter. And what an average guy he seems to be. That's because the portrait was painted after his sudden death at the age of 45. The portrait could only be based on a photograph, and so the one they used was his wife Hillary's favorite picture. Then there's Mr. DeGray, the only gentleman without a jacket. Tom and the artist decided that he should look just like he did when he was working in the office every day. Now here's a detail that very few people know. After Mr. DeGray died several years ago, we had his memorial here in the chapel. <clears throat> Mrs. DeGray asked Mr. Quinn if she should have the artist paint a jacket on Tom. She was always a little uncomfortable with it. Thankfully, Mr. Quinn said no, that that looked just like the Tom that we all knew and loved. There are many other reminders 
of Petty's past filling this chapel. Some of them are of famous people, so I'll bet most of you know that over there, there's a plaque honoring the visit by Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, if you're lucky enough to sit in bench seven, there's a little plaque on there that says, um, Walter Annenberg, class of 27. That's all it says. But there are also a lot of non-famous people honored here as well, people you've never heard of. So if you're in row 33, it's dedicated to Fred Will Frederick Howell, class of 43, who died in the Battle of the Bulge on Christmas Eve. Also in row 28, there's a memory to Daniel Simon, class of 41, whose parents had inscribed that he knew no fear. Most of the markers that go down that center aisle are from parents who wanted to honor their sons. So you get the idea. This building holds Petty's past in ways more profoundly than any other place on campus. But it also contains profound memories of experiences of Petty's past. I already alluded to Mr. Potter's portrait, but to those of us who knew Ed, it takes a second place, a distant second place, to our memory of his funeral here in the chapel. I sat right there, uh, immediately behind his daughter, Tappan, who was my advising, who was going into her senior year at Petty. Our chaplain at that time was named uh, Reverend John Martin, and he was a terrific guy. And he was also a very close friend of Ed Potter's. And I don't know how he ever got through that funeral. I do have a lot of happy memories of the chapel, uh, notably all those Blair days uh, when our serious reverence for this place would go on vacation so that we could cheer on the Falcons before they had to face off against Blair. Uh, I remember the visit of former President Gerald Ford. It was memorable in many ways, uh, but for me, I walked out of Roberson Dorm to come over to the chapel and looked up and on the roof of Annenberg were Secret Service snipers. We also had, in 1988, Governor Thomas Kane, governor of New Jersey, speak in the chapel. Uh, some seniors got into major trouble uh, because they pulled a prank while he was speaking. And no, I am not going to tell you what they did, uh, but I will say that Governor Kane thought it was very funny. Mr. Potter did not. <laughs> the chapel was also home to Alumni Day prayer services when the old guard would come to the chapel in June. Uh, people like Clarence Coleman and Henry Coates, Coates Coleman, real people. They were actually very, very nice guys. Uh, they would sit quietly and listen to readings and prayers remembering their old classmates from Petty who had already passed on. They would sit in bench nine because it's honors, it honors Mr. Coates' father, who was in the class of 1905. So for 10 years, with, starting with the faculty processing in at convocation and ending with the seniors processing out from baccalaureate, the chapel had deeply affected me. So how and why did I overcome my fear and say yes to becoming the chaplain? I suddenly realized that the reasons I had for saying no were the very reasons why I should say yes. It was precisely because I loved the chapel and respected all of its rich symbolism and history and traditions that I should at least try to make chapel even more of what it already was. I didn't want to change the chapel. I wanted to grow it. Over the years, many people helped me in many ways. Uh, the beautiful symbols that you see of some of the world's major religions were gradually donated and added to the chapel. And in addition to the lighting of candles during Christmas Vespers, we started the lighting of the Hanukkah candles during a chapel, the menorah, was on this table in the beginning. Um, that table is important. It was handcrafted by an artisan in Allentown and a gift by the Parents Association to honor the class of 2003. Talks were given about Kwanzaa 
in Ramadan. I was very happy to see the prayer rugs here when I came into chapel. And we had wonderful celebrations of Chinese New Year and Diwali, the Hindu festival of lights. Petty became extraordinary in its ability to be both non-denominational, denominational, its affiliation with the Baptist church had ended long ago, but in a way, multi-denominational. Non-believers and believers could listen and learn about their traditions embraced by diverse members of our community. Students began to email me prayer requests or requests for hopeful healing prayers and thoughts from those who chose not to pray. And I would announce them with no names attached right before the moment of silence. And so we would begin chapel with things like for my grandmother who was dying or for uh, my best friend who was overcoming an eating disorder or for my father who lost a job. Everyone could choose to either silently pray or not pray. How fortunate we were to have then and to have now that kind of freedom. We also began making music a regular part of the chapel. Kristen Ocker was the director of music at that time. Uh, that grand piano was donated to Petty in her honor. And <clears throat> she asked students if they would play or sing appropriate prelude music to try to help settle us down as we entered the chapel. At least twice a year, we would have uh, the entire chapel time given over to musical student performances led by either Mr. Michaels or Ms. Green. Brave students were our most admired speakers. Happy students sometimes, but more often, students who had endured hardship or witnessed suffering and who were willing to share their experiences to help the rest of us understand and be better people. So fast forward to today, Founders Day 2023. Now it's all about you. Guided by Mr. Onion, this chapel is yours now. How can you make it more of what you think it should be? I was surprised when I went to the Petty website and read the blurb about chapel that it said, it, its focus is on one of the school's core val values, balance. Well, yes, it is about balance, but I would suggest to you that the chapel is far more about three other core values, respect, honesty, and courage. Having the courage to stand up here and take the risk that is often necessary for growth, having the honesty to tell that story it can be painful. To tell other people what you believe in takes great courage. And listening to and supporting people who take those risks and state those beliefs demands great respect from each one of you, especially when their beliefs may differ drastically from your own. So what belief do you have that might encourage your classmates to be even better than they are now? What experience have you had that you can share knowing that the teenagers and adults in this chapel will respect your courage for sharing it? As you consider those questions, remember that the chapel is not about putting you in the limelight. It's about helping you bring light into other people's lives. That petty webpage that I disagreed with concludes beautifully. It says, the chapel is a reminder of all who came before and a monument to the school's deep history. You are here now and you are creating history. In this chapel, you can try to make Petty just a little bit better, even if that's only by one person remembering one thing that you said. I have it on good authority that Mr. Onion still has openings for the spring term. He certainly has openings for the fall term. If I could get up here 1,427 times, maybe you could do it just once and think about it. I'm going to close with a blessing 
that I offered at the end of every major petty function. It was drafted, as far as they can tell, in the seventh century BC. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you, and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. Thank you. I'm going to get into so much trouble for doing this, but I really feel called to do it. One of the great blessings you can have in life is to be surrounded by people. And if you're really, really fortunate, there will be at least one person who is an example of the beauty of humanity and is always available to you as a source of wisdom. And Rosemary, this is what you have been for everybody behind you and for lots of people standing in the aisles in the back. And so we thank you. Yeah. Find those people in your walk here in the time that you have left. And for some of you, be that person. And with that, go in peace to love and serve seniors first. Oh! I made a mistake. Sit down. Wait. <laughs>